Okay, so for the next week or two, we're going to be talking about Congress. Um, and so this video is just kind of an overview of Congress and how it works and what it can do. And if you remember, we've got three branches in the national government. You've got an executive branch that enforces or implements the law. And as we just learned, that's headed up by the president. And there's uh, a lot of people in the executive branch under him, but their job is to enforce or implement the law, to make it work, make it happen. The judicial branch, we've already learned about that. That's the courts. Their job is basically to interpret the law or the constitution. And that's headed by a Supreme Court. The last branch is the legislative branch. And they're maybe the most important branch because they make the law. They decide what the law is. The president and the executive branch enforce it. The courts interpret it. But Congress decides what the law is. And so specifically under Article 1 of the Constitution, the legislative or lawmaking power of the national government is in Congress. So Congress is the, the institution that has the power to make laws that everybody in America has to follow. There's a similar legislature in Richmond that we studied earlier this year that makes laws only that only apply to Virginia, but the, the group of people, the institution that makes laws for everybody in the United States is called the Congress. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about um, for the next couple of weeks. Congress is bicameral, meaning it's got two parts. Um, and the two parts are the House of Representatives and the Senate. And so we're going to talk about each one of those. And we're going to talk in a few minutes about why we set it up as bicameral with two parts instead of just one part. But for now, just know that Congress has two parts in it. One is called the U.S. House of Representatives. The other is called the U.S. Senate. Uh, you cannot be in both. You've got to be in one or the other. Um, so let's talk about the House. Uh, basically, what these, what these two basically do together is pass laws for the U.S. Pass laws that everybody in the U.S. has to follow. Um, a law doesn't count unless it's passed by both the House of Representatives and the Senate in the exact same form. So both of these groups of people have to agree before something becomes a law that everybody in America has to follow. Okay, so House of Representatives, sometimes just called the House. Um, it's got 435 members in it. And basically what we do is we take the entire country and we divide it up into 435 districts. Each district elects one member to go to the House. And each district is gonna have more or less same number of people in it, which right now it works out is about 650,000 people per each district. Uh, so you divide the country up into districts. Virginia's got 11 different uh, congressional districts, so Virginia gets to send 11 people to the House of Representatives. Um, California, because it has more people, is divided up into 53 districts. So California has 53 members in the House of Representatives. Um, Wyoming, for example, because very few people live there, only gets one member in the House of Representatives. So, The more populous states, the states with the more people living in it, get more representatives in the House. And so, like I said, Virginia is divided up into 11 districts. Uh, the district where we live, where most of us live, 
is the second district of Virginia, which basically it covers Virginia Beach, uh, some small parts of the Eastern Shore, small parts of Norfolk, a little here and there, but basically it's Virginia Beach. And the person who represents our district in the House of Representatives is named Elaine Luria. She is a Democrat and she was first elected in 2018. Okay, continuing on with the House. Everybody in the House has to run for re-election every two years. Okay, so there was an election in 2016, there was one in 2018, there'll be another one this November in 2020, 2022. And the reason that the, the framers of the Constitution, the people who wrote the Constitution set it up that way, is that the House is supposed to be the voice of the people. Because members of the House have to run for re-election every two years, they're constantly gonna be wanting to know what do the people think? Are my people in favor of this or not? Because if I do something that my people back home that I represent, who are called, by the way, constituents, if I do something, if I'm a congressperson, I do something my constituents back home don't like, they're not gonna reelect me and I'm constantly up for reelection again. So the House, the idea is that the House would speak directly for the people, um, the voice of the people. Um, currently, there are, uh, latest count I've seen, 235 Democrats, 197 Republicans and three vacancies for people who, either Congress people who died or resigned or for some reason aren't serving anymore. Um, so the Democrats have the majority of members in the House of Representatives. Things only the House can do. Um, both the House and the Senate have to vote in favor of a law for it to become a law. Um, but there's some other things that only specifically the House can do that the Senate cannot do. First of all, if Congress is going to tax the people, that bill has to start in the House, not the Senate. And the idea is that the House is the voice of the people, so if the tax bill starts there, the people must be okay with it. So it's gotta start in the House, not the Senate. Only the House can impeach or bring charges against a president or a judge. And we saw that just last year when the House impeached President Trump. Um, and then third, and we talked about this really early in the year. If no candidate gets a majority of votes in the Electoral College, and if you remember that majority is 270, then the House gets to choose who the, the next president is going to be. That hasn't happened since 1824, but that is um, a power that um, only the House has that the Senate does not. Okay, now let's look at the Senate. Okay, so the Senate, unlike the House, every state it's two senators. It doesn't matter how many people you do or do not have. If you're a state, you get two senators. And so obviously there are 100 senators in the US Senate, two for each of the 50 states. And that may come across as seeming unfair or not right, because if you think about it, California's got 40 million people. And California with their 40 million people gets two senators. Wyoming has approximately 500,000 people and they also get two senators. 
And so basically California has 80 times more people than Wyoming, but in the Senate, they are represented equally. Now, some people will say that's unfair, and maybe it is. Other people would say, no, the idea is we're not one big population, we're 50 states that come together to work together, so each state should get represented equally. So I'll leave that to, to decide, for you to decide what, what's fair or not, but that's how it works. Every state gets two centers. It doesn't matter uh, how many people you do or do not have. Okay, so when the Constitution was first written, and for about 100 to 120 years, senators were chosen not by the people, but by the state legislatures. And I mentioned earlier, we have a state legislature in Richmond that passes laws that only people in Virginia have to follow. Um, and one of their jobs, it used to be that one of their other jobs was choosing who Virginia's two senators would be. Um, that's not uh, true anymore. Now under the 16th Amendment uh, to the Constitution, which was passed right around 1910, 1912, I think, um, people now vote directly for their senators. So that's the way that we've become more democratic with a small d over time, is that uh, you and then in a couple years, uh, I and a couple years you, uh, get to choose our own senators. And those senators are elected every six years, not two years, but six years. So the reason that the term is longer, and the reason that initially senators were chosen not by people but with state legislatures, is that senators, the Senate was not supposed to really be a, a voice of the people. The Senate was supposed to be a more deliberative body of wise men. So if the people had this idea in their head of what they wanted the government to do, it would pass the House. But if it wasn't really a good idea, the sort of well-educated statesmen who would make their way into the Senate could put the brakes on and say, no, we're not going to do that, or we're going to slow it down somehow, or something like that. So that was the framers' idea behind uh, the six-year term and also having the state legislatures initially elect the senators. Our two senators for the state of Virginia are Mark Warner, who is a Democrat, and Tim Kaine, who is also a Democrat. Uh, you might remember Tim Kaine ran for vice president with Hillary Clinton in 2016. If she had won the Electoral College, she'd be Vice President Kaine right now. But we have two senators for our state, both Democrats. Um, before being in the House, Elaine Luria had never been in politics before. Before being in the Senate, both Warner and Kane had been uh, governor of Virginia. Uh, Kane had been the mayor of Richmond. So usually the people in the Senate have some other political job first, is looked on as a more important, um, more substantive, bigger job. So usually people, before they get to the Senate, have some political experience under their belt. And that's true of both Mark Warner and, and of Tim Kane. Um, Luria's background was she was in the military for a long time and then she was a small business owner, but she had never been in politics before uh, running for Congress and, and winning. Um, okay, a couple things only the Senate can do. And let me check something real quick. Okay, camera's still running, that's a good thing. Things that only the Senate can do. We've talked about most of these already. When the president nominates certain people, like a judge or a secretary of state, the Senate gets to approve them or reject them. The House of Representatives does not get a vote. They just have to go with whatever the Senate decides. Also, if the president negotiates a treaty with another country, the Senate gets to either approve it or reject it. The House does not get a vote. So they've just got to go with whatever the Senate uh, decides on that. As we saw last uh, fall, winter, 
the, at the house impeaches a president or a judge, that president or a judge then goes on trial in the Senate. And so in our case, Trump was impeached, but he went on trial in the Senate and the Senate voted not to remove him from office. So the final decision was the Senate's. And then in the situation that we mentioned earlier, if there's no majority vote in the Electoral College, if none of the candidates gets 270, the House decides who the president is, but the Senate decides who the vice president is. And so if you look at least at these three things, maybe not the last one, but if you look at those three things, that would suggest that the Senate was viewed by the framers as a more important body and given some more important jobs. And most people today look at the Senate as being a more um, prestigious institution to be in than the House, in part because there are fewer senators, in part because they have these sort of other jobs that uh, the people in the House um, do not. Okay, let's get back to bicameral. Why did we set it up in our Constitution that the Congress would have two parts? And I think there's two good answers to that. This was part of what's called the Great Compromise or the Connecticut Compromise. And we've talked about that before, and you've probably talked about it in US history. But the idea was uh, states with a lot of people, like Virginia, said, hey, we've got more people than Delaware. We should get more representatives in the Congress. States with fewer people, like Delaware, said, no, 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 we're not going to just show up in the Congress and be outvoted by Virginia every time. Every state should be equal. And to get some kind of agreement on the Constitution, basically, they split it in the middle. And um, Mr. Flynn already stopped by. Um, they met in the middle and they said, okay, we'll give the Senate where everybody will be equal for states like Delaware to, uh, to, to be equal with Virginia, but the House will be a place where states with more people like uh, Virginia, Pennsylvania will have more say. The other reason though had to do with our view of government. Uh, the framers were very concerned about a government acting too quickly and doing things uh, sort of in the heat of the moment that they would later regret. And so that's why they set up the checks and balances between the three branches, but they also thought that Congress was gonna be the most powerful of the branches, and so they broke Congress up into to slow Congress down, to make sure that Congress didn't act too quickly. For anything to happen, it had to be approved by not only the House, which was the voice of the people, but also by the Senate, which was supposed to be these more deliberative wise men. So it would uh, make government sort of pause and think for a minute before doing anything, um, which the framers saw as a good thing. Now the flip side is if we need to do something really quickly, it can be very frustrating because sometimes the Senate and the House don't agree. And last week it took, a, um, it took a little longer probably than most people would have hoped to get that economic stimulus bill about Corona passed because the Democrats and the Republicans weren't on the same page about what should be in it. But eventually they, they got it done. Um, some other things real quick to finish this up. Uh, to be in the House, you have to be 25 years old. You have to be a citizen of the United States. And you have to have lived here for seven years. And it's not natural born citizen. You can become a citizen later in life and then be in the House, unlike the president. Um, Senate, you have to be 30. You have to be a citizen. And nine years. Um, actually, I think that's backwards. You have to be a citizen for seven years and you have to be a resident of the country. You have to be a citizen for nine years in the Senate and also a resident of uh, uh, not only the country, but of the state or of the district that you actually represent. You have to actually live there. Uh, if you live in Virginia Beach, you can't represent Wyoming. Um, and then a few last things about the current Congress. Um, the average age in the House is 57, and the Senate is 62. Um, let's see, there are 52 African Americans out of the 535, um, 50, let's, no, that's not 55, uh, 52 in the House, 3 in the Senate, 
Um, there are 44 Hispanic Americans, uh, 40 in the House, 4 in the Senate, uh, 15 Asian Americans, 12 in the House, 3 in the Senate. Um, as far as um, women, there are 102 women in the House out of the 435, um, and there are 25 women in the Senate. And by the way, the, the party breakdown in the Senate, I forgot to mention it earlier, it's 53 Republicans, it's 45 Democrats, and it's uh, two independents, one of whom is Bernie Sanders, but basically those independents vote with the Democrats together. So basically it's 53 Republicans and 47 Democrats. Um, and also most people, going back to this part, most people in Congress um, then are male, most of them are white, most of them are older, uh, most of them are Christian, and specifically Protestant Christian, being not Catholic, Christian and not Catholic. Um, uh, almost all of them are college educated, so that the Congress is not necessarily representative of America when it comes to gender or when it comes to, to race or education or income level or anything like that. Um, that probably doesn't surprise you. Okay, just kind of a quick overview of Congress, uh, that'll get you set up for the rest of the chapter.